Okay, the um, the last video was obviously about why I married a boom. I'm trying to keep it as close to 10 minutes as I can because I find the longer the go, um, the harder it is to upload them for some for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so, we looked at last time why America boomed and some of the points that I mentioned to you were about um, how America was already in a, a good place anyway um, because of World War I. Um, I mentioned government policy about how they'd actually like, brought in Ford and Macomba, how there'd be a tax break, how they had this laissez-faire attitude. We talked about um, people could buy on higher purchase and we also told about mass production where you could basically <coughs> it was leading to um, things being built on an assembly line and it was bringing the price of products down because you didn't have to pay um, skilled workers as such it was easier to train people to do one particular job and it meant your cars, your radios, your gramophones, your refrigerators etc were built on a, um, a lot quicker and a lot cheaper than had been before and has been shown this way by Ford. So there was a lot of confidence in America at this time, a hell of a lot of confidence. Now there should have probably been um, some some warning signs there that this couldn't go on forever because not everyone did prosper. Okay, now I'm going to touch on that in a separate video but you know maybe the market wasn't as big um, is what it could have been to keep America booming over time. All right. Now, um, what you did find, and it, it links into why America prospered. The key point was the stock market, and basically, um, more and more people with, with money in their pocket were looking for ways to spend it, and you were living in a time of where there was new inventions coming out. Um, where people had you know money there from jobs and it's like almost like the good times are never going to end. Um, the warning signs, as I've said, were there. Like roughly only over 50%, just over like 51% of Americans were actually um, making more than $2,000 a year, right? So you had about 50% of the country earning less than $2,000 a year, which was seen as the minimum requirement for a comfortable standard of living at that time, right? You should also bear in mind that people like farmers, they were still failing. Now that might sound like, oh, that's not many people, but you need to bear in mind that the, the middle of America, places like Nebraska and Iowa are farming states. So farms, farmers not prospering is massive, right? And when you've got machinery coming in, that's just lowering the price of goods even further so farmers were getting hit worse the black population was suffering massively through the 20s right the poor education um, the you know a lot of the jobs when they stayed in the south in particular were farming jobs they were usually the first people hired off at them fired and um, with this like basically last hired first fired policy they would get lower paid jobs in the north or the south um, immigrants again there was a poor attitude towards immigrants immigrants were given lower paid jobs and um, immigrants were seen as working for less so people would pay them less so what you saw is that there was a, there was huge problems there and then you can add to that as well that some people were making money that wouldn't necessarily be above board so for example your gangsters and your uh, your bootleggers and yeah okay they're spending money but it's not in an honest way so the warning signs were there but there was a lot of confidence in American society which led to why it boomed and this would lead to the buying of shares on the stock market now in this time period you've got lots of new industries lots of new goods being made and people want to make them they want to make money so companies would usually have to borrow money, find a way to finance if you're going to get your company off the ground, buy equipment, pay for staff, etc. So what you could get is you could get people <coughs> to invest in your company, right? So an investor at the end of it all would then get a share of the profits. So if the company's doing well, 
and you bought say five percent five percent into that company you can expect five percent of the profits and you could then trade your shares on what was called the stock market which was based in Wall Street in New York in the United States and the prices would vary depending how well um, the company is doing or how well the country the company is rumored to be doing now let's just bear this in mind <coughs> in the 1920s a lot of people were buying products desired products like radios gramophones etc people wanted to spend money so products were selling okay a lot of these products these new goods in the 1920s were selling and that was leading to jobs it was leading to profits etc so because of this because the products were selling and companies were doing well the value of the company moved up and therefore the share prices moved up and this is going to link into something called speculation and it was really like a get rich quick scheme and what it meant was is that with people having more money in their pockets and people having the confidence to spend it people were buying into companies stocks and shares and I'm not talking about necessarily people wearing suits walking around Wall Street in the USA I'm talking about you know your average person me buying stocks and shares or you know like a, a, a retired person a grandma or something going buying stocks and shares people were paying playing the stock market it became like a national craze so what was happening was with speculation people could go to a bank say oh I want to take a loan out and the question you'll be asked is well you know why do you why do you want a loan what are you going to use it for and because company profits were soaring everywhere at that time buying into stocks and shares was seen as a can't fill get rich quick scheme so banks were more than happy to loan money out for people who wanted to play the stock market because they were going to get it back plus interest so you could go along take your loan out buy a load of stocks and shares hold on to them wait till the price rose sufficiently for you sell them because there was the demand for everybody was doing this so there was the demand to, to buy stocks and shares and then um, you go back to the bank you pay your loan off you give them their interest back and you pocket the rest right so playing the stock market and the confidence to actually be able to spend money on stocks and shares or any other new products was another reason why America boomed in the 1920s okay there was another this is why people bought stocks and shares and it became a national craze it's like going to gamble and put a bet on but you already know the result at the end of it all people were, were happy enough to do that at that time okay so I hope this helps thanks for watching